Ryan Fitzpatrick. Thursday night football analyst, of course, former NFL quarterback. You can catch him and the entire Thursday night football crew on Prime Video this fall. Good to see you, bud. How you doing? How's the beard? Beard is uh, actually combed this morning, so I like hopefully it. it looks good for you. Yeah, I like that. Do you oil it? Not much. No, I am pretty. It's pretty low maintenance. Maybe a little. Maybe a little blow dryer every now and again. <laughs> When's the last time you were clean shaven? Years and years. My kids will not let me do it, and I don't know. I'm afraid. I don't know what's under there right now. To be honest. <laughs> You could have a paycheck under there. You wouldn't even know it, as big as that <laughs> thing is. All right. Um, the uh, schedule released last night. I, it, can you be an interesting team but be a bad team? Yeah, I think so. I mean, I, I've got the schedule printed out here. One of the ones I was looking at, November 9th, Carolina, Chicago, you know, which as we're going through the games, I'm looking at it thinking, gosh. Uh, but, you know, by November – We've got the number one pick that's going to be playing. We've got Justin Fields, who I think everybody's looking to improve this year. And all of a sudden, you've got an intriguing matchup of quarterbacks that, you know, maybe the initial look at that game, I was thinking, ah, you know, we'll see. But and, and even being in Chicago that time of year is going to be great, too. But how excited would you be when you were playing when the schedule came out? Uh, it depends on what team I was playing for, because usually it was, gosh, we're playing at one o'clock every <laughs> single week. Uh, <laughs> so I think, you know, I, I think catching a, a, a Thursday night game, a Sunday night, a Monday night, that yeah. was always the excitement was being able to play in front of your peers. Uh, but yeah, you know, one o'clock makes for a lot of uh, dinners at home with the family on the home games. But nice. would you rather play if I said you could play a one o'clock or you could play in the evening? As a player, uh, yeah. I know you said you want to play in front of, you know, the biggest audience there. But as far as routine and schedule, uh, is it easier to play a day game than a night game as far as, you know, seeing things and atmosphere, all that? Involved? Yeah. So so I think, yes, being in a normal routine of every week, one o'clock, whether you're traveling or you're playing a home game, that's easier for players. Uh, that being said, Everybody wants those night games because I know what comes with that. Eyeballs come with that. That means that the league views you as a team that has a chance to be legitimate. And you've got these teams, obviously the Jets this year, they're going to have to adjust because with the Aaron Rodgers factor, I mean, a lot of those guys, they haven't really played in any primetime games uh, the last few years in their young career. So it's going to be an adjustment for them. But then you've got Patrick Mahomes and Josh Allen. Those two teams in Kansas City and Buffalo are so used to, okay, we're going to have five or six a year. I'm not sure why the Chargers have six primetime games. I understand Buffalo and Dallas and Kansas City. Well, I, yeah, I mean, I don't I don't need to explain to you that, you know, the L.A. market, obviously, but also Justin Herbert. I think there's so much intrigue around him. And, you know, you take Justin Herbert, who has had multiple coaches now, and you insert Kellen Moore, who's led the highest scoring offense the last few years in Dallas. I think there's a lot of intrigue around that team. And, you know, I would say uh, it would be an understatement to say that they underperformed last year with the hype and the yeah. expectation of what their defense was supposed to be with all the new additions last year. But I'm thinking, why not Cincinnati playing six? They have four. I mean, Joe Burrow uh, got right. a lot of, you know, cha I mean, you got you got an interesting team there. Um what else was I? Baltimore with Lamar Jackson, maybe not. Um, but I. Well, I'll, yeah, I'll say this though. With so we actually have Baltimore, Cincinnati this year. Um, I think everybody every year now wants to see um, Kansas City, Cincinnati, Buffalo, Cincinnati. If it happens to be that they're matching up, but this Baltimore, Cincinnati game, I, I think with Lamar Jackson there are question marks because of the injuries and what's happened the last few years, but I'm really excited about what he's going to do this year. A, the contract stuff is behind us. So that's not going to be in the back of his mind. If he's nicked or ding, you know, he's going to be a football player. He's going to play through it. But Todd Munkin, a guy that I played for in Tampa Bay and some of the weapons that they've given Lamar, I think that offense, it is going to be very intriguing this year to see where they can go. Um, so to be able to have a matchup for us like Baltimore, Cincinnati, 
Uh, that's one of the ones, you know, if you're circling your favorite game on Thursday night football, that's one of the ones I think a lot of people would circle. I saw where Green Bay has five primetime games. And I know there's a great fan base, but, and Minnesota has five. I don't know if people are tuning in to watch Minnesota. You'll tune for the curiosity with Jordan Love, but I don't, I don't know if those are interesting teams. Yeah. So the Green Bay stuff, you know, we have them week four, which I'm very happy we have them early because there is a lot of intrigue. <laughs> yes. right? There's a lot of intrigue about Jordan Love and what this team is going to do. But I also think you're going to see, I mean, Coach LaFleur, we're going to see what kind of coach he is, you know, because there's no more Aaron Rodgers. And I think you rely so much on your veteran quarterbacks that you take it for granted sometimes. And so for Aaron Rodgers to hold that place together for as long as he did, there is intrigue, but as they, let's say that they get off to a bad start and start losing games, that intrigue is going to wane. So week four, Green Bay, we have Green Bay, uh, Detroit. Looking forward to it. I'm glad it's not week 16. How much does the veteran quarterback help a rookie quarterback or is supposed to help a rookie quarterback? A, a lot. Uh, really, just the approach to the game. The NFL game is so different. The study habits have to be so different. The way that you take care of your body, the routine that you get into, all that stuff, being able to learn from a guy that's done it. And I would just take the example of Carolina. Really smart move to bring in somebody like Andy Dalton, uh, who's done it. Josh McCown on the coaching staff, who's done it. So now we're going to try to groom this young guy. And you have a couple willing participants there that are going to say, look, this is what I've done in my career. This is what's been successful, what hasn't. You've got to choose your own path. But it's really important because it's the toughest position to play, and you don't want a guy out there just winging it, trying to figure it out on his own. But how difficult is it to groom the guy who's going to take your job? I just think there's there's certain guys. You, just, you know, I was in a position, especially late in my career, that was my role. My role was... I'm going to try to find a place, you know, every year it seemed like I got to find a team where I can play. I know they're going to draft the guy. I'm going to help this guy, but I'm going to be the placeholder for a year, whether it's a year or half a season or whatever it is. And it's a difficult thing because, you know, for me, it was like, okay, I've won over this team. We're playing well, but you know, there's always that, you know, hourglass where the sand is running out and you're going to be on the bench and then you got to support the guy. But that, for me, that was the back half of my NFL career. And a guy like Andy Dalton, uh, trying to think of other guys, you know, Mitch Trubisky, I guess, last year maybe is in that. But you've got to embrace it because you know that that's your role and that's what's going to help each franchise that you play at. Talking to Ryan Fitzpatrick, Thursday Night Football analyst, and uh, they'll be on Prime Video this fall. Look at Ryan Tannehill. This is the second consecutive year they've drafted somebody who's supposed to take his job now you got Will Levis coming to town. Uh, how do you think that's going to play out? Uh, you know, that that's all going to be contingent on how Ryan plays. It, it really is. And unfortunately, with Tennessee, you know, they went from the number one seed two years ago to falling off last year to potentially falling off even more this year, just with more age and tread on some of the veterans' tires. Uh, Ryan's a really good quarterback, but he's got to be in the right situation. Um, and, and so, you know, he is going to be one of those guys. He's not going to be looking over his shoulder. He's going to go out and play. I think we saw with Malik Willis last year, he's not ready. He he wasn't ready to get out there when Ryan got hurt and play. Will Levis, I think, would be in the same category. So they want Ryan to do well and succeed, but it is an interesting situation where they keep drafting guys to replace him. How can Tua Tungavailoa play differently to play safer? You know, that's a hard, it's a hard question because you know he the one thing that he does really well is he can anticipate and get the ball out of his hands. And so, you know, that's something that's going to be a real strength for him. Play calling is the same way. You can protect your quarterback by some of the plays that you're calling. If you have a play down the field, and they're going to want to throw the ball down the field to Tyreek Hill, they're going to want to throw it down the, hill, down the field to Jalen Waddle. That's where that San Francisco offense, the play action, freezing everybody at the line and buying yourself a couple extra seconds, moving the pocket, uh, that's really going to help Tua. But 
he just, you know, I heard he's, he's taken judo classes and learning how like that, that stuff, that stuff really doesn't matter. It's going to be getting the ball out of his hand. It's going to be maybe getting some guys up front to protect him even better. And just one more year in that system of him understanding where his issues are in protection will be helpful for him. How good were you at hiding injuries? Uh, good. You get good at it for sure. It, part of it is, you know, you want to be out there, you have to be available for your team and especially position I was in, um, you know, I was never that franchise guy. So I had to be available or else they were just going to move on and go to the next guy. But the other part is you don't want the other team to know, especially, you know, playing a position, a quarterback where you're vulnerable, whether it's a rib injury or an ankle injury or a shoulder injury, you don't want them to know to be able to go after you. Good to talk to you. You enjoying TV? You got it figured out? I am. Yeah, no, still figuring it out. But I had a uh, I had a great first year. I think the same as with football. It's it's a team environment that you try to create. There's chemistry that you know we had some great natural chemistry, and then there was some stuff we had to work on. But having great relationships off air really does translate to good stuff on the air. I think that's what I figured out in year one, and I really like the people I'm working with. When I first started at Football Night in America, I said, we need to have a dinner every Saturday night. Just to talk. You know, then you're, you know, you're talking about your family or you're talking football, whatever it is. It's almost, it it gives you that built-in kind of camaraderie. And, 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 and therefore you're trusting each other on the air. And, and I, I did that with Tony Dungy and Rodney Harrison. And I thought it made us better because we knew each other as opposed to you're, you know, introducing yourself to Joe Thomas and like, Hey Joe, how are you? Ryan, how are yeah. you? Well, and we, you know, we did that. And I think so, somebody very smart that was on the team recognized the significance of that. And every Wednesday night we would fly into the city. We would have our dinners. We actually had a dinner in Denver that got a little out of hand, big sushi bill. And then, uh, you know, we had to scale it back a little bit. Um, after that, but how much was we, the uh, uh, sushi? Let's guess the sushi bill. I'll just tell you over or under. So you take okay. a guess okay. and I'll tell you if you're high or low. 5,000. So ooh, you're pretty, you're pretty close. You're pretty close. Now I will say it wasn't just the crew. It was the producers. It was that we had the back room. It was 20 plus people. So you're probably a little low. All right. 6,000. Right around there. I, I don't know the exact, you know. <laughs> Who I, paid for it? Uh, I, I'll say, you know, we've got we've got the highest paid fifth round pick of all time in Richard Sherman. We've got Andrew Whitworth, who did pretty well for himself. Tony Gonzalez, no slouch, especially with all the money he's picking up for the commercials. So uh, usually, usually we just leave it with Big Wit, you know, just because he's, <laughs> he's such a force in L.A., so... Well, you are working for the richest man in the world, and Jeff Bezos. So, I think they, they paid they paid a lot of money for the rights. Though, you know? <laughs> so, we're <laughs> good to talk to you, Ryan, and uh, thanks for joining us. All right, thanks, Dan. That's Ryan Fitzpatrick. Thursday night football, and uh, you can catch him the entire Thursday night football crew on Prime Video this season. 